All right, what do we do with the stock of Chipotle? Here's stock that's been one of the biggest winners from the shelter-in-place economy. When the pandemic hit and the market crashed in March, Chipotle's stock got slammed down to 415. We got behind it once again. Because we figured this team is so smart, it would figure things out. Sure enough, the company swiftly pivoted hard to digital ordering, mass market delivery, exactly what it needed to do. And uh, that's when I started telling you the stock deserved to be at $1,000. Well, now it's at $1,000 and actually $1,048. Chipotle's had a magnificent run here, including a 65% plus gain since we last spoke to the CEO two months ago. You heard that, 65. They're making a fortune with the delivery apparatus and drive through Chipotle lanes. But after such a magnificent move, the discipline thing might be to take some profits, right? Take a little off the table. Uh, we had a price target and it beat it. That said, I suspect this stock could have a lot more upside as it's become a trusted place to get food during a period of incredible fear and uncertainty. But don't take it from me or from my staff because we order Chipotle constantly. So let's check in with Brian Nickel, the turnaround artist, chairman, CEO of Chipotle Mexican Grill. To get a better read on how his coming's doing with Ted and Mr. Nickel. Welcome back to me, buddy. Hey, Jim. Thanks for having me. Good to be back. Brian, it looks like uh, the second quarter estimates, based on some of the checks that people are doing, including someone at Wedbush this morning, are indicating that things may be a, a lot better than we thought, even though they were already pretty good. I know it's you can't talk about numbers specifically, but is there something going on that we should realize? Because it does seem there's a step function. You know, Jim, uh, you, you touched on this in the opening. We've been investing heavily into digital, uh, and we've been investing heavily into our people and operations. And both of those things have served us well during uh, the COVID crisis. And I think they'll continue to serve us well going forward. We've been cautious in how we've uh, reopened dining rooms, but our hope is our digital gains will remain in really good shape while we start to bring back the dining room. And I think that's what some of the folks are starting to write about. Well, is it really possible that your uh, average unit volume could go up to 2.5 million? Is that even doable? Jim, I, I think it's absolutely doable. And uh, it's been a target of this team uh, from the day I got here a little over two and a half, I guess almost, yeah, two and a half years ago. And uh, what we've always said on the team is once we get to two and a half million, our eyes will be on how do we go beyond that? So. Uh, we're very optimistic with the access that we're creating with our digital kitchens and all the digital access points combined with our food with integrity approach and the in-store customization speed value experience. Uh, we absolutely believe we can get back to two five average unit volumes with industry leading margins. Yeah, bro, we don't, one thing you and I don't talk enough about is your model, uh, the franchise model. People fell in love with it for a long time. It turns out that if you own the stores and you want to give people a 10 percent pay increase because you want to appreciate it, you cut them a check. If you want teamwork, you huddle with your team. This model may be the tested model in a tough time. Yeah, Jim, look, I, I would tell you uh, we're very fortunate that all 85,000 employees are Chipotle-focused uh, employees that value the same values that we have as a organization. Uh, this idea and purpose around cultivating a better world, giving people access to food with integrity, it runs from my office all the way down to every general manager's office. And the power of huddling this team together during uh, this coronavirus crisis has been really amazing. I mean, we already had great food safety and wellness programs in place, but I would get on the phone with 2,500, 3,000 restaurant general managers, and we would talk about what we're gonna do from a pay standpoint, what we need to do from a health and wellness standpoint on a Monday, and I gotta give these guys credit, Tuesday morning, they were already in action making it happen. And that's the power of our company culture, and that's the power of, uh, frankly, the great employees we have at Chipotle. And I also think that it works uh nationally to be able to bargain. I mean, Chipotle lanes were something I know the real estate investment trusts were initially dubious of, but now you, they've got someone who they should, they should pay you to be in there. You bring traffic, <laughs> Brian, and I know that you're able to negotiate leases, but the fact is it, a lot of places need your traffic, and without it, it seems pretty dead. Look, you know, uh, Jim, I had the opportunity to go visit a couple markets over the last week or two, and one of the things that was a highlight of my visit was seeing these Chipotle lanes in action. It's another digital access point. And I got to tell you, you know, I ordered a quesadilla ahead of time uh, on our app. We're testing this in uh, Cleveland and Indianapolis. 
And, you know, I picked the time to pick it up. I pull up to the window, don't even hop out of the car. Quesadillas in my, you know, in my hands, wow. out I go. Um, and it's pretty an amazing experience, uh, especially for Chipotle, to get the quality of our food with the customization of our food at that type of speed. Uh, I just think it's it's a whole new access point for Chipotle that people just are telling us they love. And we've got 80, 90 restaurants today. Um, it's going to be a big piece of our growth model going forward, for sure. All right. Now, th this was a tough weekend for a lot of different people uh, in a lot of urban areas. Yeah. I'm from Philly. There's two Chipotles I absolutely love on Walnut Street. Please tell me they're OK. I mean, I know you lost a bunch of stores. Yeah, look, the uh, you know, obviously all these events have been tragic and it hurts on so many levels, um, you know, and uh, fortunately, all of our employees have been safe. We have had some damage to restaurants, uh, but it's all damage, frankly, that we can patch up and fix. Um, you know, I'm optimistic about um, our future. And I think, you know, we have to address some of these issues that are absolutely plaguing, um, you know, this great country. And I believe we will address them and we'll get back on uh, with doing the right things for everybody. And that's one of the things I love about Chipotle. It's a company for everybody. You know, there's such growth opportunities um, for everybody that joins our company. And um, hopefully we're building a culture where everybody knows they're supported. It's an inclusive environment. And uh, we truly can get on with making this world a better place. Yeah, I've always seen your place as a model of inclusion. Uh, last thing, uh, it, it's, it's pretty clear that you guys have figured out a bunch of things that others don't. A virtual prom? <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you yeah. know, we threw my daughter's graduation party at, at, at <laughs> Bucknell at Chipotle, but now you're going to another level. Yeah, look, I, I got to hand it to our teams here. It is uh, a, a group of people that loves creativity, isn't afraid to, you know, take some risks and be on the front end of it. And, you know, the virtual prom, I thought was just a brilliant idea. Um, and they've done a lot of fun things around Chipotle together where, you know, we had Gronkowski leading a workout. We had uh, some country Western singers doing, uh, you know, some fun stuff over lunch. And uh, yeah, I, look, I love the creativity that runs through our organization. Uh, it really is one of the key values um, that we look for in everybody that joins Chipotle. And it shows in some of the fun things like a virtual prom. Well, we also care, by the way. I mean, I trust the, I don't trust the food chain as much as I trust the Chipotle chain. <laughs> well, look, you know, I, I have to really give a huge hats off to uh, Carlos. He runs our supply chain group. They've done a phenomenal job of keeping our food with integrity ingredients in stock you know, we've had some challenges here or there, and we'll right. probably have a few more as we do reopenings. But for the most part, Jim, uh, we've been very fortunate to have, you know, the food that you crave, that your team craves, <laughs> uh, and have it available for you guys. So, um, you know, sometimes a little food in these times goes a long way for people to get together around it, the table. It makes us so happy. It's good. If you were there, you would be like, oh, my God, those guys are insane. Anyway, thank you so much for coming on, Brian Nickel, Chairman and CEO of Chipotle Mexican Grill. Always good to see you. Yeah, likewise, Jim. Thanks for having me. Take care. I switched to the bowl. As you get older, you have to make adjustments. The bowl is makes me thinner than the burrito and my spectacular burrito. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.